Hi, James with the OneHourSmartHome.com, and today we're going to talk about Z-Wave switches versus Wi-Fi switches. So I've got a Wi-Fi smart home switch here in my uh, left hand and a Z-Wave smart switch in my right hand. They look almost identical. Uh, the only thing that really tells them apart is you can see there's a Wi-Fi logo designation there, and you can see on this one it says Z-Wave. And I've got the actual switch here, right here. You can see these things are basically the exact same thing, um, but how they work is very different. These ones are from Leviton, but there are all kinds of smart Wi-Fi switches that you can get. Um, here's another Wi-Fi switch. Here's another Wi-Fi switch. There's literally dozens and dozens of Wi-Fi switches out there on the market. But uh, I'm gonna talk about Z-Wave light switches first and kind of how they operate and how they work. So this is actually one of the first light switches I ever installed in my home. Um, these Leviton Z-Wave light switches. And it might've been an older model, but it was still a Z-Wave switch. And that was probably five or six years ago. And the reason that I installed uh, Z-Wave switches in my home is that there just weren't that many Wi-Fi light switches out there on the market, Wi-Fi smart light switches out on the market at the time. Z-Wave was pretty popular. Uh, another protocol was Zigbee, uh, it's pretty popular. And then there's some proprietary stuff um, from Let's see if I've got one here from Lutron. Um, but why I went with Z-Wave is back in the day, uh, these were pretty much the most economical option. They had a lot of good options in terms of face plates and different styles that you could use. And Wi-Fi switches just weren't out there and they were pretty expensive. And some of them honestly weren't very reliable or they had a poor Wi-Fi interface. The other thing about five or six years ago is that Wi-Fi routers weren't great. You didn't really have Google Wi-Fi, Eero routers. You had, you know, those Wi-Fi routers that had like 16 antennas on them, or, uh, you know, they were just changing so fast at that time that the Wi-Fi wasn't necessarily as strong as you'd want it to be to cover through the house, or they really didn't even have mesh network systems or good mesh network systems at the time that were readily available to consumers, which now they do have Wi-Fi systems that are relatively available to consumers that work great in a mesh scenario, so you can extend the Wi-Fi everywhere. And what I liked about Z-Wave at the time was that Z-Wave light switches, each one of these will repeat the Z-Wave signal. So they did require a hub, which was, which was one negative to them. And I used a SmartThings hub for them. I still have a SmartThings hub and I still do have some Z-Wave light switches in my house. Just kind of test them out and keep everybody informed or when somebody sends us one uh, so that we can uh, give you a review of it. But I had this connected to the SmartThings hub and it would work through my phone. And when it worked, it was great. Now the issue that you have is that the light switches will be very reliable. They will work with Z-Wave, but the hubs that you connect them to are not always reliable. Um, some of the main hubs were Wink Hub, the SmartThings Hub, and uh, HomeSeer is one. There's a couple other Z-Wave hubs out there, but the issue was, is it like with Wink, their service was always going down because that company has been bought like three or four times and sold to different people with different intentions. And so while the switch would be working, the Wi-Fi hub would be going through like a, or the Z-Wave hub would be going through a service upgrade and that would cause you issues. Um, same thing with smart things. It was much more reliable. I still have one. It is reliable, but every once in a while it wouldn't work. And if you had your lights all in one configuration or you left your house and you left all your lights on, because the hub wasn't working, you couldn't access the light switches and they wouldn't work. So that is kind of a negative is that they do require a hub, which is an added extra expense. Um, and if that hub or the service provider for that hub isn't doing updates, then you're going to have these switches that you're going to have problems with. So you're relying on the hub manufacturer to continue to update and provide support and do all this stuff for the Z-Wave light switches in order for them to work. And like Mikasa Vera and, uh, Home series, these kind of more custom platforms, they pretty much were very reliable. It's just that they're more work than kind of your average consumer probably wants to do. They're more of like an engineering DIY tinkerer kind of thing. And they work great. It's just that you have to have a little bit of knowledge about how this stuff works and how it all operates in order to use them or be proficient with them. It's not something you're just going to open up and five minutes later be, you know, really good at. They have their little nuances to them. Um, so, at the time, I had automated my whole house with the Z-Wave light switches. 
Um, there's stuff in the programming that you can look and see if they're repeating a the signal. They all repeated the signal really good. I never had problems with any of them being too far away because the Z-Wave system does create a mesh network. So each switch will communicate commands to the other ones and the hub and it will relay those commands. So that is the nice thing about Z-Wave switches. Now the other thing is Z-Wave switches, most of them out on the market now do require neutral wire. But at the time, there was a smart dimmer switch that did not require a neutral wire that worked on Z-Wave. I'll uh, put a link to that below and uh, see if that is still an option, if it's still out there. But uh, that didn't require neutral. So that was good for older light switch applications or older light wiring applications that didn't have a neutral wire. Um, Wi-Fi switches, pretty much all of them currently on the market uh, do require a uh, neutral wire in order to work and that's because Wi-Fi draws a ton more power or the signal processing of Wi-Fi to get that signal out there to the uh, router takes a ton of energy compared to Z-Wave. It's a very low power protocol. doesn't need a lot of energy. So uh, some of those switches didn't require a neutral wire. Um, this one does. This one's from Leviton. This Z-Wave switch, it did require a neutral wire. Um, but they did, you know, two-way switch... Uh, that standard switches and then three-way switches and four-way switches. So if you wanted to have a place where you could have multiple lights turn on and off from different light switches, you could do that with these Z-Wave switches. So they worked good. The only uh, disadvantage is that you rely on the hub and you rely on that hub manufacturer or hub provider to provide uh, ongoing support for your uh, Z-Wave light switches, which is to some people not going to be an appealing thing. Now, this is another Leviton light switch, but this is the Wi-Fi version. They came out with this. Um, so the advantages of Wi-Fi switches in the majority of the new smart light switches that I've been putting in my home um, have all been Wi-Fi switches. Here's another Wi-Fi switch. We'll put a link to this one below and we'll put a link to this Wi-Fi dimmer switch here um, below. But the advantage of Wi-Fi is that there is no hub manufacturer or anything like that. Um, these are gonna just connect right to your Wi-Fi router. So that's really nice um, in terms of, you don't have to worry about hub. Um, a lot of these just kind of, let's say generic smart lights, which is they work on what's called the Smart Life Pro, uh, Protocol or T-U-Y-A Protocol, uh, TUA is a company that basically does kind of the Wi-Fi programming uh, for a certain set of Wi-Fi chips and makes them all work on this very common app. You might even have a uh, TUA or Smart Life app light switch or plug already in your home. So they all connect just directly to your Wi-Fi router. Uh, Leviton, you know, they have their own app. Um, Wemo is another Wi-Fi light switch manufacturer, but you don't have to rely on a hub to continue to working. Um, these will all just connect right to your Wi-Fi and then they'll connect to the app. And um, obviously for the larger companies, they're gonna have that support and everything else, but I almost kind of like some of these generic Wi-Fi switches better than I like some of the name brand ones because there's like 30, 40 companies that make these generic light switches and they're supported by that Tula or Smart Life app. And it's kind of uh, more democratized to the point where that's probably never gonna go out because maintaining the app support's pretty easy. And there's just so many millions of devices that work on these generic ones compared to maybe um, a manufacturer down the road might decide to stop support. So. Um, that's just one thought. I mean, Leviton's a huge company. They'll continue to support this stuff for a really long time. And an app investment is way less of an investment than a hub investment. Um, the reason being is that all you're doing is like, you know, reprogramming an app. You can go find people to do that for a couple thousand dollars versus these smart hubs have all this hardware inside of them. And there's all kinds of different features that you have to update versus just a standard, uh, Wi-Fi protocol on the apps, which are much easier. Um, so the one disadvantage of, this is my dog Moose, he wants to be in the video. Um, so the one disadvantage of Wi-Fi light switches is that they do require a neutral wire. Um, and that's because they use so much power. So if you are considering something like this, you really need to check if your light switches first, the existing ones, have a neutral wire in the switch box. And we have a video that teaches you how to identify a neutral wire in your light switch box to see if you could put a Wi-Fi switch in there. Um, now, I don't wanna get too far into this. Let's see if we've got that switch around. Um, but let's say you don't find a neutral wire and you don't wanna use a Z-Wave switch. Um, the only other option that you've got is, um, these are, this is a Leviton Smart Dimmer here. 
And these don't require a neutral wire, but they still require a hub. They require the Lutron hub. So this is a Lutron switch. I don't know what I said before, if I said the right thing or not. But um, this is a Lutron smart dimmer. And these do require a hub, but they don't work on Wi-Fi. They work on Lutron's own proprietary radio frequency. So, and they do require a hub. So that's kind of a disadvantage of that. However, Lutron's a huge company and they'll support this stuff for a long time because they use this not only in uh, residential applications, but this is used a lot in commercial applications. Um, so there's some advantages to that. However, why I like Wi-Fi switches, if you have a neutral wire in your switch box, which most people after 1985, if your house was built after that, you will have a neutral wire in your switch box, is they're just easy, they're inexpensive. Um, you know, they're, they're one of those things that you can set up in 10, 15 minutes and they're going to work right on your phone and you don't have to worry about hub manufacturers and you don't have to worry about updates as much with these. You can also find, um, smart light switches that will work with smart plugs and all kinds of other stuff. Um, all of these, the Z wave, the Lutron Cassetta, the Wi-Fi smart switches, they will all work with Alexa. Um, Google Home, some of them will work with HomeKit or Siri commands. You just got to find the right one that will work with HomeKit or Siri commands. And uh, that that's kind of what you need to know. All of them will allow you to control them remotely from within your home with your phone, or they'll allow you to remotely control them outside your home um, using your phone and the app. But overall, if I was installing new smart switches and I had to choose between Z-Wave or Wi-Fi in a new home or a home built after 1985, I would most likely choose a Wi-Fi switch just because of the variety of light switches that you can choose out there. And you could mix and match with Wi-Fi switches um, because you know they're on kind of their own connection directly to your Wi-Fi router. And, uh, you know, you can get mesh Wi-Fi routers that will spread the Wi-Fi signal everywhere. But also, uh, they're less expensive. They're easier to kind of maintain. And you don't have to worry about a hub. You just have to worry about your Wi-Fi router, making sure that's got a good signal, which they usually do. Um, so I, I would probably go that way. Um, any switches that I've been replacing, I've been putting in Wi-Fi light switches for the most part. So that's my take on it. We hope you enjoyed this comparison of Z-Wave versus Wi-Fi Smart light switches if you like this video please go ahead and click on the links below we'll include our favorite wi-fi light switches and favorite z-wave light switches and uh also then include um links to some of our other posts on smart home wiring and how that all works so thank you for watching we'll see you next time